Thank you so much, Demos, for that very kind introduction. Uh, may I begin by thanking you, Colin, also for being an educator and a teacher as a person whose electorate includes the lands of the Wurundjeri people. I too, I'm very much on a journey to understand uh, the history of my communities and of course uh, the Macedon electorate extends into the lands of the Jara people and the Tungarong people. And um, I, I thank you. Every day I'm enriched by the stories that I hear from the Indigenous people of our communities and thank you for your forbearance, really, uh, with us. Um, can I also uh, acknowledge again Demos, uh, of course, the wonderful CEO of the North Richmond Community Health Centre, and in doing so also extend a great big hello to all of you from your local member, the, um, how, how do we describe Richard? The irreplaceable um, member for Richmond, uh, Richard Wynne. Uh, your amazing group of keynote speakers who are here today, Professor Jörg Eberhard from the University of Sydney, uh, Associate Professor Lisa Gibbs from the University of Melbourne, Nadine Lashko from North Richmond Community Health, Associate Professor Christine Rodder from the University of Melbourne, Roger Lyndon Meyer, North Richmond Community Health, Lulu Zhu from North Richmond Community Health, Dr Meng Wong Tang from the University of Queensland, Dr John Furler, North Richmond Community Health, Joan Myers Braun from the City of Yarra. Ladies and gentlemen, and right now I'm going to give a shout out also to Julie McCormack, who's here, uh, formerly from Talangata High School, just like me, I can oh. see <laughs> sitting in there. But uh, look, a, a few words about community health. I was really taken by what Demos was talking about, the great challenge within the health sector and the health system. So many fabulous people so much skill, knowledge, so much experience. But hey, you've got to talk together. You talk more. Uh, you've got to hang out together some more and you've got to share your experience and ideas. But what better place to do that than community health? Community health has been doing that for years. And of course, you are the great incubator for great initiatives and innovations in healthcare. So Please, I know you do it all also on the smell of an oily rag, let's be clear about that, uh, but you are a great incubator and the system as a whole can learn so much from the way in which the community health sector uh, really puts into action that idea of the patient at the centre, the person at the centre of all of our, uh, of our health system. You do it and you are a model for the rest of the system. So... Congratulations too for all the great work that you do, do here at North Richmond Community Health. Your work is truly appreciated and recognised by the Victorian Government. Um, now, it was my great pleasure to be here last year and I wasn't aware that it was your first conference, but of course I, I love the idea of going to a conference that was called Where the Mind Meets the Mouth. And I must say I had no idea what I was coming to, none whatsoever. But I learned so much from that day and it really has stuck with me. So when the opportunity came to speak with you again today, I, I seized that moment. I also must commend you on what I think is a fantastic initiative, which is holding a conference on a Friday, right? So at the end of the day, especially for visitors who have come from elsewhere, you can all hang out a little bit more on a Friday, relax, enjoy some time together uh, and, and have some social time at the end of the day. So well done to you for, for all of that. So in the period since I was here a year or so ago and I was just explaining that I, this is a statistic I say to everyone that I meet and I, I bore them all to tears with it. I say, did you know that poor oral health is the leading cause of preventable hospital admissions for people under 20? And people say to me, no, I didn't know that. I said, well, it is. And uh, we must do something about that. And did you know that in the community health sector, there's some really fantastic innovation going on in the oral health care space? And people go, really, is it? I say, yes. And we need to do more to promote the work that you are doing. Uh, you know right here at the, at the absolute coalface 
the challenges that we have as a community to address with the poor oral health of our community at large. Now, Demos was talking about the, um, what, what was the initiative, the Melbourne Water, what's it called? Choose Tap. Choose Tap. So I'm going to throw a question to you. I don't, I don't know the answer to this question. But, uh, of course, most of our water in Victoria, but not all, most of our town water is now fluoridated. And we know that uh, fluoridated water is goes a long way to uh, ensuring that children and the rest of us, but the children in particular, are growing up with uh, strong teeth and getting a good start in life. But here's my question to you, which I don't know the answer to. Um, it strikes me that there are very many children who now grow up who very rarely drink tap water. Um, they, drink, uh, they drink juice, they drink soft drink, or they drink bought water. And I don't know if there's any fluoride in any of those. Does anyone know the answer to that? A little bit. Tiny little bit. Okay. So, you know, that in itself is, is a challenge. Uh, I'm... As I'm alarmed, and I'm sure you are very alarmed, when you see children um, drinking uh, juice, for instance, out of uh, little sippy cups or indeed out of bottles. Uh, we've got a big education campaign um, ahead of us when it comes to oral health. But look, the risk factors that lead to poor general health, such as low family income, lack of access to employment, good quality living conditions, limited access to nutritious food and poor access to transport, they also lead to poor oral health. You know that. I don't need to tell you that. But we, the importance around oral health is so much more than physical. I'm glad you're looking at those intersections today. But the, as you know, this is about the social health. And it strikes me that good oral health is now the class marker in our nation. Uh, as I, in, in my role, see people from all walks of life every day. And what I know, I see many people like me who have really good teeth. Uh, because I've got the necessary income to have been able to care for my teeth and indeed to go back in my 40s and get a bit of work done because uh, it, was, it was required, I can assure you of that. But, uh, you know, I belong to the first generation that can expect to keep my teeth for the whole of my life and therefore making that midlife investment in my teeth was something that I decided to do. My daughter has great teeth um, and they're, they're sort of perfect looking really. You know, all, all these little children of the middle class all have perfect looking teeth. But there are so many people in our community whose teeth are shocking uh, or I see small children who don't have teeth and the repercussions of this are endless and they are very, very disturbing. If your teeth are poor, your opportunity uh, to access employment is greatly diminished. You won't get a job in retail. You won't get a job in customer service because the discrimination uh, against people with, uh, who as a consequence of poor oral teeth have poor teeth is rife, let me tell you, because I hear about it. I, I see it in action. So it is so... We, we, the uh, good oral health is so absolutely vital to lifting people and ensuring that they have opportunity for economic security. It's as simple as that. So the work that you do is absolutely hugely important. Now... I did want to let you know that in the 2016-17 state budget, the Victorian government uh, has invested $2.4 in funding for our hospitals, ambulances and health programs as, as a whole. Uh, and within that, we are investing $1.8 a year to promote the oral health of Victorian children in settings-based prevention initiatives, including Smiles for Miles, Healthy Families, Healthy... and the Healthy Smile... Sorry, there's a lot of healthiness in there. And the Healthy Families, Healthy Smiles program. 
Uh, and I know that North Richmond Community Health is keenly involved in oral health promotion initiatives, including Smiles for Miles, the Chompers program in schools, and Pearly Whites in residential aged care facilities. Now, the, the, the budget also delivered an extra two million for a range of investments to public dental health services, including a new mobile dental van to bring vital dental care closer to home for rural Victorians, um, of course, who have much uh, uh, more limited access to services. This investment also included the purchase of a digital X-ray for the Royal Dental Hospital of Melbourne to help dentists to quickly share images with other clinicians and doctors, a picture archiving communication system to improve referral and access to services for rural and regional communities, and the upgrade of information technology infrastructure for public dental services. We do know that good oral health is important. Uh, and that's why the government will continue to invest $206 million over the 2016-17 budget period to Victoria's dental health program to provide dental care to around 332,000 eligible Victorians. I do need to say, and I know I'll be speaking to the converted here, it is incredibly disappointing to us that the Commonwealth Government still hasn't made clear its position on uh, public funding for dental programs. Um, we need to call them to account on this. You all know the importance of good oral health. You know how important it is for physical health and I've wanted to outline to you today how absolutely essential it is to the economic security of our most disadvantaged Victorians. I know that you're going to have a fantastic conference today. Um, I congratulate uh, North Richmond Community Health for your initiative in bringing so many fantastic practitioners together today. Uh, I know for those of you who are from interstate, I hope that you have an opportunity to enjoy all that inner city Melbourne has to offer. And if you're here for the weekend, well, drive on up to Kyneton. Uh, Ruth and I were talking about it earlier. It's a fant uh, Within my electorate, there are many beautiful small towns, all of which are unique and have many um, great things to offer. But look, have a great conference. It's been my pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you.